about your work, Jayshree, is uh, the way you sort of move uh, from one medium to another, mm -hmm. but how also there's a strong close dialogue among these different mediums, painting and sculptures, so that we see some of the sculptures on the wall, and you've often talked about sculptures um, in terms of installation as a sort of wall drawing, mm -hmm. which is a notion that I'd like you to maybe describe a little bit. And then the paintings that we see on this black wall, they do have a very strong uh, three-dimensional element mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. um, I know that this is a series that you began a few years ago mm -hmm. in 2007 and mm -hmm. it's called Signs of Time. Mm -hmm. So we see it as a gallery of portraits, mainly of women, and I think they sort of celebrate but also questions the different uh, subtleties about women empowerment or women as victims of history. And I wonder if you can talk to us a little bit about how you began the project and the themes in it. Basically, in at the beginning of 2007, I was in an exhibition at PS1 MoMA called Emergency Room. and. Uh, there were about 25, 30 artists who had been invited to participate. And um, we had very strict parameters. We had to create works within 24 hours that reflected on something that had been happening in the media. And so it kind of put you under the, a really specific pressure where you were reading and reading and reading all these different media sources from the New York Times or the BBC to Al Jazeera to you know the Times of India, whatever I could get my hands on and then kind of having to not overthink things and just quickly, quickly produce mm -hmm. pieces. And the collage painting on that wall came out of that entire process of working like that so quickly. And the piece is called The Rape Off and what inspired the piece was the death of a 15-year-old Afghani girl by, at the hands of some of the Allied forces who had raped her and then basically killed her to silence her. And um, this had been in the news and I had been thinking about the position of women there, both in terms of the Taliban and the Allied forces, mm -hmm. and how they had just really lost a lot of the power that they had come to kind of assume in the 60s and 70s there in Kabul, and the shift that had happened. And um, in that piece, I decided to not use the actual figure of a woman, because it was such a charged and intimate thing that happens. It's such a violation that I didn't feel like I could put a human, a living human in that piece. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and kind of Googled rape in art history to see the ways in which it had been dealt with, um, both within painting and sculpture and various ways. And I came upon this detail from the painting, The Intervention of the Sabine Women. And I thought that it was quite appropriate to use the figure, the painted figure of the woman, as opposed to an actual person that was now experiencing that. And so that, the process of making works that quickly kind of changed my practice in a very essential way, where before it, the work was very process oriented, yeah. but it was kind of intellectually really belabored to a point where I would sometimes lose my intention. Mm. And just being forced to condense everything that I wanted to say it so quickly, briefly, symbolically, right. became a really fantastic way to work. 
And so the drawing that's behind us I made kind of during that time and started drawing eagles around that time. And, you know, the whole series of paintings really came about because prior to that I hadn't painted in probably 20 years. A oh, long time. A really long time. Um, and, you know, I had, when I had painted in undergrad in a very similar way, it was really kind of mocked and not understood. And I was too naive myself to understand, mm -hmm. you know, um, anything other than, you know, I had been trained in India to paint this way and this is how I painted and, you know, wasn't clear as to why I wanted to do this and and I took up photography for a really long time and shied away from painting although I felt like as a photographer I was really a frustrated painter uh -huh. <laughs> and, and so then when the series happened I just said the hell with it and started painting again and just painted and painted and painted and painted until I did it my way you know and and uh, they started doing what I wanted them to do yeah and it seems like these portraits, they have a very iconic quality to yeah. them rather than being psychological or intimate portraits. And then you turn them into very carefully crafted objects, right? Yeah. Um, why is that? Why, what is the meaning for you of the decorative element that you attain using feathers or the Swarovski crystals, which is the kind of material that you use in the sculptures as well. What's the symbolism yeah. behind it, if there is one? Well, the, uh, they're like, um, well, with all the pieces, especially like, say, with that piece, um, the Swarovski against the whips started off kind of being a symbol of wealth and power and privilege, um, which is really what the Swarovski brand is associated with. It's a very conservative brand. They themselves will never support anything that has to do with religion or sexuality or anything in the slightest bit controversial. Um, and so I find it really, you know, wonderful to be able to then use it in, a, in an intention that they really don't support. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you know where for me this is, idea of this embellishment also refers to um, kind of religious iconography and the way that gold leaf or jewels were used in paintings all across the world, whether they were miniatures, Persian miniatures, Rajasthani miniatures, mm -hmm. or old paintings here by Renaissance paintings, all of that. And, um, you know, this kind of fabulous wealth that's associated with organized religion, whether it's the Vatican or it's right. the Taliban or it's Hindu temples, both in India or in America. So it's about a seduction of power. Absolutely. Too, right? Absolutely. And um, so the materials that I kind of choose for the paintings, they are very symbolic in that way. And where like the feathers in the painting there called superstars really represent something like a boa where it would be associated with glamor and power. And here it refers to, in Daddy's Girls, it refer refers to the gay flag and also cowardice in a specific way mm -hmm. and in this painting they refer to flight it's but her fly and it's Pakistan, female Pakistani fighter pilots and so that's where it's, those same materials kind of start to have different resonance um, and then formally I noticed uh, we were looking at this together before this um, recurring um, formal uh, motif of the nose that mm -hmm. we see in the yes. Mothers of All Believers portrait, yes. but even in the first painting in the series with the hanging yeah. um, of Saddam Hussein, and then in the sculpture, one of the two fountains of youth mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, is that sort of to conflate um, destruction and, and uh, creation at the same time? How does it um, play? Um. Yes, and it's also just this, it kind of functions in various ways. That's the first time it came up was in the lynching of Saddam painting. And with that one, I wanted it to, I wanted the noose to have some sort of absolute physicality in the painting. Mm -hmm. So I embroidered 
on, on the canvas and then paint it over the thread so the noose could be a little bit more three dimensional. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that and it, it, that was the first time it struck me because, uh, I mean, before seeing that video of Saddam being hung, it had been really long that hanging as a way of killing someone had been a part of mine and the public psyche, I felt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, whereas it does happen on a daily basis in many parts of the world, suddenly it was something that entered, you know, the psyche of people living anywhere in the West or the East or wherever. And um, it's a particularly brutal way of killing someone. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I related it in the painting I had heard, you spoke about my videos. If I had done a video interview with a woman who's Indian American veteran of the US Marines, and she referred to that as the, the act, as the lynching of Saddam. Oh, okay, so that's where, that's where the title from. came from. And I'm the, in that moment when she said the lynching of Saddam is where I then made all these associations to lynchings in the American South and the American history of lynchings in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's when the news kind of became really charged again for me. And when, like, when I use it in the Heartland piece, there, it's specifically again referring to the history of slavery and lynchings okay. in America, and then in this particular painting, Mother of Believers, All Believers, it's um, the painting is of a woman named Samira Jassim, an Iraqi woman who worked with the Taliban to identify vulnerable women, and had 80 of them raped, and t then was consequently able to turn 28 of those 80 women into suicide bombers who then killed themselves. So there are 28 nooses in that piece ah, so for cool. each life sentence that she would get. Mm -hmm. And there are 28 projectiles for the 28 women who turned themselves into human projectiles. And it's kind of decorated with nails that they would embed themselves with. and barbed wire, which is also used in it. And so the materials of each painting end up reflecting the ideas within the painting as well. The embellishment does as well. Like the painting in the gold frame there is called the uh, Paradise was a Black Widow. And there all the embellishment is completely symbolic. The green um, background is symbolic, the spider web, the Allahu Akbar script, the yeah. sword, all of it. Well, the painting is of a woman named Jannat, whose name means paradise, mm -hmm. uh, who blew herself up in the Moscow subways earlier this year and then killed 40 people in doing that. And it's a portrait of her and her husband, which had floated on the internet with them holding guns. and. Um, her husband was killed by the Russians and he was a Chechen Islamic separatist. Mm -hmm. And the state that they, are, they died trying to form has this green, o the flag of the state has a green oval with the Allahu Akbar and the sword in it. And so his death caused her to become a black widow, which is where the spider web comes from. And then the title becomes Paradise was a Black Widow. Um, so it, it's, you know, one action that causes another action that has a reaction within the larger world. And um, and I think within the series as a whole, you um, address these issues that are very contradictory mm -hmm. and pose difficult questions to the viewer as mm -hmm. well. Because some of the viewers, I think, will recognize certain public figures like mm -hmm. Condoleezza Rice in the Heart of Darkness and some of the South Asians uh, politicians. Others are more like everyday people. Mm -hmm. So there are probably ways to um, connect directly to the mm -hmm. stories that you're evoking, mm -hmm. but it's also very open-ended, I yeah. think. And um, you also uh, put the viewer in touch with different views of women's agency in mm -hmm. history. And I think from a feminist point of view, that really opens it up to um, 
self-criticism mm -hmm. in a way, right? Mm -hmm. And I think maybe if you can talk a little bit about, in particular, Heart of Darkness, that sort of notion of blackness mm -hmm. and empowerment of women, mm -hmm. but it points out at the difficulty of gaining power and then basically reenacting mm -hmm. the violence of male yeah. system. Yeah. Um, and I understand that Joseph Conrad novel was also an inspiration to mm -hmm. you for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it was, you know, the analogy for me between that novel and, you know, this white man who enters Africa and then is lost um, and dies there, you know, um, having kind of lived a life of complete debauchery mm. and isolation and grandeur and power. Um, really brutal. And it seemed to me that the choices that Ayan Hirsi Ali and Condé Rice were making were kind of uh, laden with the similar cho like power, you know. Um, and we have, myself in particular, all of the, you know, black women that I admire are extremely radical and often separatists. And so these women become very, very complicated figures to look at. Mm -hmm. And I wanted very much to present questions in the paintings because I felt like just having, you know, gone to protests and done very activisty things, it always became really hard to reconcile, you know, the reality of what we live with, ideology, which can be very monolithic yeah. and really not embrace the complexity of everything that we live, which can be so contradictory to mm -hmm. our own mm -hmm ideology and um, you know there are a lot of questions that I can't resolve myself right and so I kind of put them in the work because you know it, the paintings have the space you can create the space within the paintings for all those contradictions to exist together mm -hmm. and without saying okay this is just the one way that you know this is what I believe and this is just the one way right. that things should be you know so you explore an issue but from multiple points of view and multiple voices yeah. rather than saying there's one answer yeah. one dimensional yeah response to it so it seems to me that for you art is a political opportunity but more like in the sense that you were touching on right now um, so that it sort of solicits more and more questions right mm -hmm. and brings ambivalences out mm -hmm. in the picture yeah um, and I think one of the most difficult uh, themes to address mm -hmm. is um, violence within the terrorism, mm -hmm. a larger theme, which you do with the Saddam painting, the portrait of the suicide bombers and mm -hmm. mothers of all believers. And to me, this gallery of portraits is sort of a contribution to the genre of history painting mm -hmm. from individual stories, yeah. point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm just reminded of Gera Victor history paintings about the terrorist mm. of the DDR. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that in terms of one of the choices that you've made. Yeah, um, I just felt like I had to be very, very, very specific. That I had no problem kind of fixing and locating the people in these paintings to this moment. Mm. because they could serve as a record of this time in our history, like right. you said, you know. And this is, you know, this is kind of what is being lived right now by all of us, you know. Um, and, I mean, they're often embedded within them are kind of like, you know, my own life experiences and choices that I have made and the questions that I grapple with, you know, um, my own fears, you know, like that Hearts of Darkness, the film that was made was Apocalypse Now, that's one of the oh, yeah, films that was based uh, 
on the and so this piece here is called Kalyug now and it plays on that notion of apocalypse <sighs> Kalyug being I don't know how much I'll have to explain it to this crowd which is great <laughs> yay <laughs> uh, you know but kind of think, taking this um, the lotus position and the idea of um, spiritual enlightenment and t flipping that to nuclear uh, apocalypse, really, and having the illumination be that of um, destruction as opposed to illumination or enlightenment. And it really came through um, and also thinking about ideas of mutation, taking the third eye in a darker way from the, the notion of like uh, Bhopal or Hiroshima and Nagasaki mm -hmm. and deformity and all of those kinds of things that come into it. So your point of view seems to be very strongly um, the one of a female artist. Mm -hmm with imagery about femininity, but mm -hmm. also with a larger, I think, universal resonance mm -hmm. about human experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about death, but also birth and desire, mm -hmm. with some of the sculptures that uh, use dildos mm -hmm. and then the elements of the leather weaves. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that choice. Sure. Two materials. The, the lingams, the dildos started with the lingams, um, which was, again, a very contradictory impulse to make something that was very beautiful, but to not make it just purely celebratory, to also make it subversive at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the lingams kind of do that because they're 